Ask any casual viewer or hardcore fan about the G.I. Joe franchise, the G.I. Joe cartoon will spring to mind, and rightfully so, as the original Sumbo cartoon was very successful, spanning two seasons and an animated movie, not to mention a very successful comic book series and toy line. The cartoon itself settled around an elite anti-terrorist unit that defended the world's freedom from the evil terrorist organization, Cobra, led by Cobra Commander who was determined to rule the world. Most children of the 80s would have followed the G.I. Joe's fight against Cobra, with the likes of Duke, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, Flint and Lady J battling Cobra, led by the unforgettable Cobra Commander and his fellow Cobra members, Destro, Zartan the Baroness, Firefly, and many other classic villains. What maybe is not so well known about the G.I. Joe franchise is, over the Atlantic in the United Kingdom, there was a toy line and comic book series called Action Force. In England, the Star Wars figures were selling very well, so the Politoy Toy Company started the Action Force toy line, which was based heavily around G.I. Joe, but they changed the name from G.I. Joe to Action Force because it sounded too American. The Action Force toy line would get an extra boost in popularity by having a comic strip run in the British weekly comic Battle. Battle Weekly was a comic aimed at young boys that had a majority of its stories set around World War II. When the Action Force strip had what was supposed to be a short run proved very popular, it was decided that more stories were to be made. With the fast success of the Action Force strip, Battle Weekly became Battle Action Force Weekly. Because the Action Force toy line borrowed very heavily from the G.I. Joe toy line, many familiar vehicles from the Cobra organization were used by the Red Shadows, such as their Hyena tank, which was a Cobra Hiss tank repainted red and with different stickers minus the Cobra insignia. The Action Force comic was somewhat different from its G.I. Joe American cousin. The main difference was that Action Force's enemy was not Cobra, but the evil Baron Ironblood and his Red Shadows. Baron Ironblood himself wore a metal mask similar to infamous Australian outlaw Ned Kelly. Like Cobra Commander, Baron Ironblood had an endless army of foot soldiers. These came in the form of his Red Shadows. The Red Shadows wore red-helmeted quasi-Nazi uniforms and had weapons such as stick grenades, for example. Every Red Shadow recruit had to have survived a gruelling and deadly assault course laced with mines while evading being cut to pieces by machine gun turrets. Those Red Shadows fortunate to survive to earn the right to become a Red Shadow were immediately brainwashed to be fanatically loyal to Baron Ironblood and wanting to die for him at a moment's notice. Battle Action Force Weekly ran for a few more years, but towards the end of its run they made an effort to tie the G.I. Joe and Action Force continuities together. To do this, they gradually introduced US characters such as Duke, Scarlet, Flint and Hawk and many others. But to fully integrate the two continuities, the Battle Action Force comic had to reckon in the Cobra organization, so they came up with a storyline in which the nations of the world had had enough of Baron Ironblood and the Red Shadows, and proclaimed him enemy number one. With the might of the world's superpowers poised to destroy him and his Red Shadows, Baron Ironblood decided to leak out information on all of his Red Shadow bases, betraying his Red Shadows and allowing the world and Action Force to kill a majority of them. He then faked his own death and created a new terrorist organization, Cobra, and created a new persona for himself, Cobra Commander. Now that Battle Action Force is somewhat reckoned in the US Joes and Cobra, the following issues set around the now Cobra Commander sending out his Cobra forces to not only fight Action Force, but any remnants of the Red Shadows that hadn't been killed by his betrayal. A few years later, Marvel took over the rights to Action Force with their own new comic, that was more in continuity with the G.I. Joe U.S. counterpart. The new weekly comic had U.S. reprint stories with British stories also. The U.S. reprint stories were slightly altered, replacing G.I. Joe from any speech bubbles with Action Force. This series ran for about 50 or so issues before being absorbed into the Transformers Marvel UK comic. In more recent times, the Red Shadows have been absorbed finally into the US Devil's Due G.I. Joe continuity, where they have become not only a threat to G.I. Joe, but Cobra also. The Red Shadows also kill off Lady Jay.